So yesterday, there were a few people that were like, I don't, is Phil really gonna give $5,000 to someone that's already been subscribed and $5,000 to someone newly subscribed in this month? And you know what? Uh, honestly, I, I lied. I lied. I'm giving $15,000 away because uh, I'm about to give $5,000 away to someone that is on my text line. You can join right now. And if Chelsea accepts my random ass Zoom invite, she'll get 5K. Oh shit, she actually, yeah, she actually hit it. Okay, one second. All right, can you hear me? Yeah, are, are you talking? Directly to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> oh, then, okay. This was very unexpected. I know. I don't know exactly how to react. Oh. <laughs> that's that's completely fair, but I thought it'd be fun to, to randomly pick one person from the text line to give 5K, and that is you. Are you, are you fucking kidding me? No, uh, you just have to give me your like Venmo or whatever the easiest way to do it, and it's you. I. To make sure I didn't lose you, I added you to my uh, my favorites in the uh, the app, but it's it's you. I know it's weird and it's it's a weird internet thing, but uh, I just I don't know. I uh, I know what that can mean, and uh, I know this is like super random. You're one out of like several thousand people, but it... oh my god! And I was I was like, this is stupid to send him a text because he doesn't even look at them, so it's I do. Obviously, I'm crying right now. This it's okay. Is <laughs> this is weird, and um, I wow, what a good uh way to end my day of <laughs> doing my resume and putting in job applications. Yeah, I mean, hopefully it'll it'll buy you a little time, a little breathing room. Oh my God, my rent can be paid. That's great. And oh my god. I love and, your face, Chelsea. I'm I'm so glad yeah. I'm so glad that like the random selection <laughs> thing ended up going to someone that like it sounds like you needed it, so I, I love your face. I'm glad. I oh my god, I love your face so much more. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god. Of course. I don't know that this is really happening. So. <laughs> this is this is not a this is not a bad trip. It's happening. This is a weird feeling. We're starting today's show on a Happy note, am I pronouncing that right? Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. It is Wednesday, April 7th, 2021. Hit that like button, let's just jump into the news. And the first thing that we're gonna talk about today in the world of online entertainment is the news surrounding YouTube, Twitch, also several other sites, but primarily those two. And this, in part because one, you had StreamHadget, which tracks metrics among gaming streamers publishing its findings for the first quarter of 2021. And among those metrics, you had it being reported that live streaming audiences have continued to skyrocket. In fact, between January and March, the number of daily hours watched increased by 80% from the same time frame last year. Also, in this same quarter, Twitch dominated as the top streaming platform with 8.8 .8 billion hours watched compared to YouTube's 1.4 and Facebook Gaming's 1.1. And really, no surprise here if you're even slightly aware of the space, uh, Stream Hatchet found that Valkyrie and Pokimane were the top two most watched female streamers on those gaming platforms. Pokimane coming in at 6.8 million hours of watch time, Valkyrie nearly doubling that with 12.2 million hours of watch time. Stream Hatchet noting here that Valkyrie specifically has continued to bridge the gap between gaming culture and kind of more general pop culture. But I mean, most recently you can point to her appearance in the Machine Gun Kelly Corpse Husband music video. Also, I mean, just today there were big business moves. You had Valkyrie along with Jack Courage Dunlop announcing that they are now co-owners of the esports organization 100 Thieves, which I mean, congratulations to both. That's absolutely huge. And the reason here that I say top female streamers is that this report makes clear and notes that the male female streamer gap is still substantial. With these two going from number one and number two to 27th and 98th when you bring in male streamers. When you look at the overall top 10 streamers for most hours watched, the numbers are, I mean, it's on a whole different level. For example, you had XQC, topping the list with over 73 million hours watched. You also had streamers like Ludwig and Shroud coming in lower on the top 10, but still well above the 20 million hours mark. But we are also seeing some expectations that the numbers here will shift. And the reason for that is while a lot of people think, you know, the gaming sphere has been dominated by men, and historically it has, it appears that there are big viewership trends that are changing. For example, back in 2017, it was reported that over 80% of all Twitch users were male. But by 2019, that number had fallen to about 65%. And one of the last interesting notes that I'll touch on with this report is that we are seeing massive growth for women, especially when it comes to VTubers, with women dominating that sphere, specifically with some having astronomical growths of up to 274%. And you know, as far as my opinion and my take on this, well, yes, it is interesting to see male versus female. It's interesting to see VTubers versus people showing their face. As long as the space in general is doing well, 
I'm happy. And while I know there's this talk and debate about, you know, are we going to continue seeing these massive, massive numbers as things return to normal? I personally believe that we're gonna see continued strong growth here, right? Because while it is a far, far different situation, a lot of the growth that we're seeing now, it reminds me of what we experienced back in 2007, 2008. I'd been on YouTube one to two years at that point, and all of a sudden, because of the writer's strike, you had a lot of people looking for more entertainment, and ideally, free entertainment. And like a ton of creators and streamers now are experiencing, we got a ton of new interests, new viewership, and it just, it was a rocket ship. And so I think a lot of the numbers we're seeing today are just going to continue going up and, and also we're seeing a different kind of growth in the creator space, though, from a business aspect. There's a lot of money flooding the market right now regarding entertainment and kind of anything digital subscription. For example, just today we saw the Wall Street Journal reporting that Patreon raised $155 million in this latest round at a $4 billion valuation. It is a creator creator subscription platform that has thrived during this time period. I mean, this is just the way things are going. It's the way things have been going. And I think just more and more people are now becoming aware of it. And actually the question I'll connect to this story is, you know, how did your viewership habits change over the last year? And did you end up going to kind of more at this point, traditional platforms like a, a Netflix or an Amazon Prime, or did you go to Twitch? Did you go to YouTube and find new creators? Then, you know how yesterday we talked about Kim Kardashian being a billionaire and you guys were like, oh my God, I really, really care care about this, I love this, Team Kim. Well, uh, according to Forbes, while it is still rare for a person to be a billionaire, she is far from the only one. With Forbes reporting on their 35th annual list of the world's wealthiest, that there are now 2,755 billionaires, which is a jump of 660 billionaires in just a year. They also found that this list together is worth $13.1 trillion, an increase of $5.1 trillion from last year's list. And altogether, right, collectively, 86% of all billionaires are richer than they were a year ago. With the biggest earner being Elon Musk, who went from, uh, let's be honest, an embarrassing $24.6 billion, that's cute, to his now $151 billion fortune, putting him at number two, only being surpassed by Jeff Bezos, who is reportedly worth $177 billion, though I think it's even more impressive because this is how much he's worth after he got divorced. His ex-wife, Mackenzie Scott, is the 22nd richest person in the world. But yeah, that is a story. And what's interesting is it's gonna reach your ears differently depending on who you are. Right? These might just be interesting facts. It might be aspirational. It might be infuriating. It might be a, a to-do list for eating the rich, which I guess if it's that last one, maybe I bought myself some time. And for me, honestly, it, it's all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I have many conflicting thoughts and opinions when it comes to stuff like this, especially as someone that, that grew up with pretty much nothing. But yeah, the, the question I'll pass off to you on this one is when you see this list, you hear this, what does it make you think? Are you more on the side of, wow, that's interesting, that's aspirational, or are you of the mindset of billionaires shouldn't exist? But from that, let's take a second to pay some bills and thank the fantastic sponsor of today's show, Squarespace. You know, over the past year, I know many of you have found your passion projects and what truly makes you happy, whether that means finally getting your independent business off the ground or, you know, creating a place to share your homemade goods, your new favorite hobby, obsession, or maybe even making a personal blog to get all those thoughts out of your head. And no matter what it is, Squarespace is there to help. And it's so easy. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. And creating a beautiful website with Squarespace's all-in-one platform has never been so simple. It's extremely intuitive and easy to use. Plus, with Squarespace, you get access to all their marketing tools and analytics and personalized support from their award-winning customer care team via email or live chat. Whatever you need, they are available 24-7 to help out. So if you want to check it out, see why so many people love it, see if it is perfect for you, go ahead and start your free trial today over at squarespace.com phil. And when, not if, you realize you love it, make sure you enter an offer code phil to get 10% off your first purchase. Then in, I kind of just respect the hustle news, let's talk about this coalition of DoorDash drivers. So essentially what these drivers are trying to do is game the app's algorithm in a way to increase their pay rate. So essentially this starts with two drivers urging other drivers to turn down low paying delivery so that the app's automated system for matching jobs with drivers will respond by raising pay rates. With one of those men who claims to reject 99% of delivery saying every app based on demand company's objective is to constantly shift profits from the driver back to the company. Our objective is the reverse of that. And so you have these two guys back in 2019 creating a movement called Decline Now, which has since grown to more than 40,000 members. Now, to be clear, there is no actual way to quantify this group's impact, but it has claimed to have increased pay for workers across the country. But there are, of course, questions with all of this, especially if you're using the company's own software against them, especially publicly, 
How long can that last? There have also been concerns around decline now as a movement. I mean, uh, for example, some drivers have described as a toxic environment where you have people ridiculed and bullied into going along with the plan. Others saying they publicly humiliate anyone who doesn't understand or agree. We also had Bloomberg reporting that one former moderator of the forum claims to have personally suspended hundreds of people, saying the intolerance for dissent was necessary to keep the group moving in the right direction. Right, Bloomberg reporting that users who question the $7 minimum rule are punished with suspension from the group, or as the group's moderators like to put it, a trip to the dungeon. Right, and that $7 number is kind of the key thing here. Right, essentially, they're trying to get the minimum delivery rate from $3 to $7. But as far as if they'll have success in the long term, I hope for them, but I do have my doubts. And that is in part because as Vina Dubal, a law professor at UC Hastings Law, argues, sustaining such collective action is complicated by the constant influx of new workers. The company will give bonus incentives to a bunch of new drivers. And those drivers are not going to be a part of the club who know what to do, and then they're like the scabs. But, you know, ultimately that is where we are with the story. Of course, I'd love to know everyone's thoughts, but more specifically with this story, if you've ever dashed on Uber Eats or Uber Lyft or any of that, what are your thoughts regarding this story? Most inclined to care about what you think with this one. Then, let's talk about two stories involving the in no way controversial topic of religion. The first of which coming out of France over what has been described as an anti-radicalism bill. Right, and so if you didn't know, France is actually home to roughly 5 million Muslims, the largest population of Muslims in the European Union. And as NBC News explains, since the country experienced a rise in Islamist terrorist attacks in the 1990s, it has become something of a tradition for politicians to try to regulate this group. And so on one side, you have supporters saying with this bill, it's about strengthening the country, stamping out extremism. Supporters saying it is about reinforcing the nation's, quote, Republican values, liberty, equality, and fraternity. While critics of the bill have said things like, I see a blatant attack on freedom of association. This bill has no safeguards of potential abuse from public authorities. With others also going on to argue that this is more about Macron securing his presidency in the upcoming election rather than actual anti-radicalism protections. But with that said, what does this bill do? First up, you have he job bans. Any girl under the age of 18, any university students, moms on school trips are banned from wearing the headscarf. You've got regulated homeschooling. All at-home education will need to be authorized by the state, affecting 62,000 home school children in France. With Below the Fold's report noting some say this part of the bill targets families that include religious education in their homeschool curriculum. There are also stricter financial controls. Religious organizations that receive foreign funding will need to declare any income over 10,000 euros and publish annual reports that the government can access. French authorities can shut down places of worship for up to two months for preaching any information that could be seen as hateful. With some reports noting this is just kind of an addition to a trend there. Right? And in the past we've seen reports of some local authorities pressuring Muslim supermarkets to actually sell alcohol and pork or be shut down. Right, and all of that happening has also led to protests worldwide with Muslims from other countries calling for the boycott on French products. Right, so you have that news abroad, and then two, domestically we have news about religion in general. Because, as it turns out, religion in America is on a steep decline. Right, so Gallup has been polling and measuring this since 1937, and as recently as 1999, when they asked Americans, do you belong to a church, a synagogue, or a mosque, 70% said yes. But then, you fast forward to 2021, just a little over two decades, and they found that only 47% of Americans Americans answered yes. Also, side note, I'm not saying it is specifically the reason, but the percentage of Americans involved with organized religion has been on the decline since Lil Nas X was born. I'm not saying that's the reason based on any data, but you know, sometimes it's just fun to jump to conclusions. You know, th this movement and this change is largely being led by the, the younger generation. With Axios noting the church membership for Gen Z and millennials is actually 30 points lower than Americans born before 1946. And those lower numbers around people that are then actively having kids, there, there's this kind of chain reaction. And that is because unsurprisingly, I mean, they found this in the data, children who grew up without organized religion are less likely to join houses of worship when they become adults. And ultimately, with this story, or honestly, anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below, because this is the end of the video. Thank you, as always, for watching my daily news show. Also, remember, for the month of April, I'll be giving $5,000 to one of you beautiful bastards who are a new subscriber this month, as well as $5,000 to someone who has already been subscribed. Also, if you're looking for more to watch from me, whether it be news or personal, I got you covered right here. And of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.